Welcome to today's Making Meaning lesson. My name is Mrs. Burgess and I'm a kindergarten teacher at Broadview Thompson School. We've been using nonfiction books to learn about baby animals. Nonfiction books give us facts or true things about these baby animals. And we've been, um, while we've been reading these books, what, the most important job that we've had is to wonder. Wondering helps us understand. Wondering is asking ourselves questions as we read. So we're going to continue to do that now. The uh, four books that we've been using um, are about baby animals. Here are two of the books that we've read so far. A Baby Duck Story and A Harbor Seal Pup Grows Up. The two books that we'll be focusing on today are A Tiger Cub Grows Up and a baby penguin story. We're going to be focusing on these books today. And what we'll be doing is we'll be reading these books for you to have a chance to remember about the things that you've learned in those two books. When you have a chance to remember today, you'll use your rememberings, your wonderings, and learnings to write about these two animals. So before we get started, um, I do want you to know that during our lesson, you might need to turn and talk. At school, we often have a turn and talk partner very close to us. Um, and today, I, want, I will be asking you to turn and talk a few times. And when you turn and talk, now you can use the language that you usually use at home if you want to. Now, you can also uh, pretend to use a phone. You can pretend to use the phone and call Mrs. Burgess if you don't have a turn and talk partner. Another turn and talk partner might be a stuffy. Mrs. Favorite, Mrs. Burgess's favorite thing to do if you don't have anyone close to you is to whisper to your hand. So if I ask you to turn and talk, go ahead and whisper to your hand if you don't have anyone nearby. All right. Now, um, let's go ahead. I just want to review really quickly some things that we learned before about our baby animals. I'm going to look at our chart. Things we learned about baby animals. Some baby animals grow up with people, like Tara the tiger cub. Some baby animals drink their mother's milk. And here's a seal pup drinking um, her mother's milk. Some baby animals hatch from eggs. Another thing that we did learn is that baby tigers have sharp and rounded teeth. That's just a quick review of some of the things that we've learned before from these nonfiction books about baby animals. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna quickly retell you um, our focus books today. A Baby Penguin Story. A baby penguin story. A baby penguin is born in a rocky nest. This is one parent looking after that nest. A baby penguin is fed by its parents when it is first hatched. It needs to stay very, very warm because penguins are born in a very icy world, somewhere that it's cold. They do, baby penguins do play with other baby penguins. Now I realize, I know that I've learned that baby penguins are fed by their um, mothers and fathers when they're really small. I'm wondering, what did we, what else did we learn? What else did we learn? Yes, baby penguins are hatched from eggs. Now, what else did we learn? Yes, baby penguins do group together with other baby penguins in their colony. What is one other thing? Let's see if we can hear one other thing someone else learned. Yes. Baby penguins do uh, stick very close to their parents because they need to stay warm because of where they live. B 
baby penguins do learn from other baby penguins and here are some baby penguins that are um, playing on the icy ground. Baby penguins lose their fluffy feathers and they have new waterproof feathers underneath. We learned that baby penguins first learn to get in the water and to feed on small little shrimp-like food called krip. When penguins swim in the water, they almost look like they're flying through their water by using their flippers. When penguins get really fast swimming, they can dive and jump out of the water as they're trying to catch a fish. When they are experts at finding fish, they can go out to the ocean by themselves and find their own food. Now, I know that I learned that baby penguins can group together um, in a colony. I'm wondering what you've learned. Yes, baby penguins do learn to get their own food. Yes, penguins swim through the water and it looks like they're almost flying. Yes, once penguins can learn to catch food and fish on their own, they can go off by themselves to the ocean to get their own food. Great job. Let's look at a baby tiger cub grows up. Now, remember that when we are looking through these books, it's your chance to remember, think, and wonder about what you know. And when we do that, we'll have a chance to think about all the things that we can write about later. A tiger cub grows up. Here is a baby tiger cub, and we notice that the baby tiger cub is with a a person. The baby tiger cub lives with people and it's drinking milk. This baby tiger cub still has um, a human, a person taking care of them, even giving them a bath. The baby tiger cub does a lot of sleeping. The baby tiger cub still is drinking milk and is being cared for by a human. But the tiger cub's eyes are now open and it's always hungry. There's that baby tiger cub still being fed by a, uh, their keeper. Also sleeping a lot, but look at the teeth that a baby tiger cub has now. Do you see that baby tiger cub chewing on a lot of things? It likes to bite the edge of his pen and other things that they can get their little chubby paws on. Oh, look at that baby tiger cub walking around now. Oh, but it is still biting. I wonder how hard that baby tiger cub can bite. Oh, it looks like the baby tiger cub has gone to a vet, an animal doctor, to get a checkup. Doesn't look very happy, does it? Maybe it doesn't like the bright lights. The baby tiger cub is now in a leash. I noticed that the baby tiger cub is always with a person to take care of them. What else have you learned so far in this book? I'll listen in. Yes, the baby tiger cub does sleep quite a bit. Yes, I noticed that the uh, baby tiger cub drinks milk from a bottle. Yes, the baby tiger cub does love to bite things and play with its keepers. Let's look at the rest of the book. Ooh, the baby tiger cub, Tara, is outside.
She can run now. She's exploring the water. She plays with her keeper. The keeper looks like she's teaching Tara to do all sorts of things. The, the keeper sure looks like she's communicating and responding to Tara. They sure look like they're having fun. It looks like Tara is pouncing on her keeper. In this part of the book, we know that Tara is joining the adult tigers. She's big enough now to play with humans and the adult tigers. Wow, Tara is now enjoying the water. There are still uh, humans playing with the tigers even um, now, even as Tara is getting so big that she's with the adult tigers. There are still people helping her. So I noticed that Tara has gotten really big. Um, I'm wondering what else people have noticed in this book. Yes, she is with the grown-up tigers now. Yes, even though Tara is big, she still likes to play. Yes, Tara can pounce on her keeper, and she likes to have fun. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's think about these two books. When um, these two books gave us information and facts all about the baby animals as they grew up. Now, we can think of these uh, two books telling us about some things that are the same for the baby animals and some things that are different about the eight baby animals. Let's go ahead and get our chart ready and let's think about all the things that we know that might be the same about what these baby animals do. Now, as we read these two books, what I heard a lot of students talking about was how were the, some of the baby animals the same and how are some of the baby animals different? Now, when I made my chart about the same and different, I put two little squares here that show that these two are the same. And I put two different colored squares here to show that these are different. So let's think about the things that I noticed that there were some things that were the same. And I noticed that some other students noticed other things that were also the same. same. So what did we learn? that were the same. I'm going to share some of the kids ideas that I heard. So things that were the same. One of the things that was the same was baby tiger cubs and penguin chicks both get fed by someone else when they're little. So I'm just going to draw a quick picture. Like if I see a baby penguin mom, it's going to be feeding the baby penguin chick by putting the food into the baby penguin's mouth. So yes, tiger cubs and penguin chicks um, are fed by someone else when they're very little. Another thing that was the same that I heard um, students talk about were that penguin chicks and tiger cubs both need food to grow. And so um, I'm gonna just draw my little baby tiger cub. And this baby tiger cub is getting milk from a bottle. And we know that a human is giving that baby tiger cub some milk. Now, another thing that I heard other students talk about were that baby chicks and tiger cubs like to play. So we know that's the same. Baby tiger cubs and penguin chicks do like to play together. And baby penguin chicks actually play with their um, other penguin chick friends out in that cool uh, world that they live in. These are some of the things that we learned from the books about what, how baby animals are the same. 
let me share some of the ideas that I heard from students about how some baby animals are different. Some things that students noticed were different were when penguins get older, they catch their own food. Tara is fed by people, so that was different. And here's Mrs. Burgess's picture of a penguin that's in the water that is trying to catch a little fish. Because we know that Tara is fed by people, but penguins do catch their own food when they're older. Another thing that was different about our two animals were that penguins grow up in the wild and Tara grows up in an animal park. And when uh, an animal grows up in an animal park, they're always with humans. So here's my picture of Tara, the tiger cub, and she's with a human. Another big difference that some students noticed was that penguins learn from other penguins, but Tara needs to learn from people. So even when they're playing, an, a tiger cub might play with the ball with a human. And they learn to play from a human where penguin chicks do learn from people. So that, that is a great way to think about how books are the same and different. All right, so now we get to do our own writing. Um, so when we do our own writing, we're going to do a, a a few things. This is what our job is going to be. Our job is going to be to remember what we learned. We might re remember that tiger cubs grow up with people or that ducks grow up with their um, their mother and father ducks. And we need to think about what we've learned and then we can go ahead and write and draw. I'll show you first. So, uh, let's see. So I'm just thinking about what I remember. And I'm gonna keep um, this part for my picture and this is the part that I'm gonna write about. So I know that, let's see, baby animals are born in the wild or in animal parks. Oh, parks. And there's my period. And then, so when I think of that, I can think of Tara and I can think of the baby penguins. And I might just start drawing a picture of Tara. And, um, and when I have Tara, I could have her um, outside in a wild animal park. And I know that when she's in the wild animal park, she's always going to have a human there. All right. And then some animals play with other animals. And sometimes they play with um, people. So I do have a person right here. And I'm gonna have a ball right here because maybe Tara's learning to play with the ball with that human. And so I'm gonna say, uh, some animals can play with other animals. Some play with people. Another thing that I remember um, learning about in these books that is that all baby animals need food to grow. So I'm going to write that down. All baby animals need food to grow. 
So since Tara, our tiger cub, does need food to grow and she needs to get it from humans, I'm going to show the humans giving her a dish full of food. Because I know that Tara is a baby animal that was uh, grow, that grew up in an animal park. She does play with people. She does sometimes play with other tigers too. And I know that Tara gets all of her food from a person and that's what I added to my picture. Now it's going to be your turn. Remember, when you do your writing, you're going to remember something you learned in our books. You're going to think about it and write and draw about it. When you write and draw, this is what your paper might look like. And it says, think about the books, A Baby Tiger Cub and A Baby Penguin Story. What did you learn about baby animals? Draw and write about what you learned in the space below. So you draw and you write. Now, that is your assignment for today. Now, if you do not have a book to look at, you can always get books by going um, to the Seattle Public Schools website, seattleschools.org. You can select Student Portal, click on Academic Tools. You might go to the Tumble Books Library or to Pebble Go to get nonfiction books that you can use for your writing assignment. Or visit Scholastic Learn at Home for other nonfiction books you can use for today's assignment. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining me today on today's Making Meaning lesson.